Hi, I'm Gary Bouton. Happy New Year, and the Alka-Seltzer is in the medicine cabinet upstairs. Welcome to the Zara Zone. Today, we're going to take a look at the construction of a dodecahedron, a 12-sided shape whose faces are pentagons. Fine art, it's not. This is simply a study in light and texture. But in the process, you'll learn how to use Zara's live effects in combination with other features. Download effects.zip and unpack it first. It contains everything you'll need to follow the steps, plus some bonus material whose use in the future is explained shortly. Okay, to begin this grand experiment, if you were starting from scratch, what you'd need is a picture of a dodecahedron. You don't, because I've done that part for you already. But if you did, you could use just about any 3D modeling program to build the dodecahedron. All we need for reference in Zara is geometry and shading. I took my own finished render, imported it to a Zara document, locked the image on a layer, and then traced over it. Also within this document is a bitmap. You'll be using it for a texture, a fill for the shapes. From the bitmap gallery, drag it onto the page and scale it up so the shape fits over any of the drawn facets. Choose the fill tool, and then choose repeating tile, and then choose the tiling handles and perhaps shrink and rotate the design. Your call here. Now to make this repeating tile more dimensional and visually interesting, you use one of Zara's live effects filters. With the shape selected, you click the wall plug icon on the toolbox, and then click New, and choose 3D Bump Map. More or less intensity changes the overall brightness, and we'd like the texture to have a highlighted upper left like the polyhedron image does, so you adjust the angle, uh, 240 degrees I think works here. Once you have the 3D bump map you need, you close the live effects box, and in this tutorial, your next step will be to make a bitmap copy of the shape. Control Shift C, then click Create. Now you can delete the original. I'm doing this so this shape carries less processing overhead with it. Live effects carry some baggage, and there are some things you'll do shortly that can't be done with a live effect shape. Now I'm going to use the Clip View feature to clip the bitmap to the center shape. And with the Selector tool, hold Alt to select under the bitmap. Press Shift now to add the bitmap to the selection. Both the bitmap on top and the polygon on bottom are selected. Press Q and the bitmap is now clipped to the underlying shape. With the Rectangle tool, create a new shape and then fill it with the bump map texture. Not the original bitmap, the bump map, and then choose the Mold tool. You'll be using it in perspective mode, not envelope because you want perspective in this tutorial, and also because envelopes don't work on bitmaps, only vector shapes in Zara. This piece is going over the top left shape, so I'm making the bottom of the bitmap larger than its top. I choose the Photo tool now, and lighten the shape so it visually separates from the center shape in the composition. Let's create a bitmap copy of this shape now. Control, Shift, C, then click Create. So you don't have to mess with the perspective feature surrounding the shape. Alt-clicking selects Under, Shift-click adds the top shape, and then Q creates the clip view. I'm not real thrilled with the brightness of the shape, and if you are too, you control click to pick the bitmap inside the clip view, and then make your adjustments. I'm going to jump ahead now so you can pause this video and complete the composition using the same steps I've just covered. Some shapes should be darker, some lighter. Now, a gray dodecagon is nice, but say you want it colored a little. This is what the light and dark contones are for in the color editor. You control click inside a shape to select the bitmap. On the color editor, you choose the light contone and then your color, and then the dark contone to set the darker color, which brown seems to do for me here. If I want sort of a bronze polygon dodecadon extinct dinosaur creature flying. Do this for all six shapes, and in about five minutes you'll have something that looks like this. In addition to the gradient background, I added a piece or two at the edges to roughen up the polyhedron. <laughs> Let's use the Quick Shape tool to make a pentagonal shadow. I'm going to send this shape to behind the polyhedron on this layer by pressing Ctrl Shift B a number of times. Now I'm moving the shape and changing its dimensions to suit my artistic taste. I realize the selection handles are a little hard to see in this video, but they'll be a little hard to see in your screen, too. I'm feathering the shadow now, and what I'll do next is add a live effect to the shadow to add a little photorealism to it. This is the diffuse filter under the distortion category. 
What this filter does is break up the edges of the shape and occasionally the interior of the shape so that the dodecahedron composition appears to be resting on a rough surface. Shadows seem like a little thing, but they do support a visually complex composition. I'm going to make a copy of the shape, Control shift c and then click Create. Why did I make a copy and then get rid of the original? Because I don't want to deal with the UI overhead of live effects when applying a second effect. Now choose the Transparency tool, use Stained Glass mode and Linear Transparency mode, and when I zoom in now, this looks pretty interesting. Huh? Again, there's a hidden layer on top in this document. It's called Finished. If you unhide it with the Page and Layer Gallery controls, it shows the polyhedron in all of its geometric glory. And if you haven't had your fill yet of Platonic Shapes, there's a file Platonic's JPEG in the zip archive that's already free to import and get into higher math.